Well, somebody had inquired about how I sharpen my chains. You know, and that's a... Uh, it was one of them things I hesitate to get into because everybody's got a theory of what is the the right way of doing it. And, you know, you can buy all kinds of gizmos for doing this sort of thing, but most of them are kind of a waste of money, uh, both in that they're not cheap and that they do tend to chew up chains quicker than need be. Myself, I, I usually, I just use a, a round file. Now the trick is to get the right file, you know, the right size of file. And one of these file guides helps in the actual sharpening of the thing, you know, it just clips on. And it's good in that it has the angles marked, so if you know what angle your chain is, you, know, you can kind of go by that mark, and it actually helps if you got... thought I had a pen here, but I don't. But a way of marking that, the angle that you're using. And then I tend to go... I do one side, then I go on the other side and do the other, rather than try to do them both from, from one side. Another tool that is helpful, not absolutely necessary, but these clamps that you can you can drive them into a stump but even doing it on a bench it helps because it holds the saw stable you know it it because what you got to do is make sure you get them consistent and if the saw is wiggling around it's hard to get them consistent well like i say i use this most of the time I, just a light touch really is all it takes like one good clean stroke on each tooth but eventually it starts wearing down. You know, you get back to the point where your rakers are too high. They call them rakers, but actually they're just a guide that sets the, the depth that the tooth is going to cut. Now eventually you have to cut them down. If you don't, you'll find your chain gets dull quicker. Because what's happening is it's, it's not taking a big enough chunk. And it's rolling that edge over which causes the chain to heat up, you know, it's just, it's better to keep ahead of that. Like I say, just one good light strike once in a while will keep it going. Now, eventually when you have to cut them rakers down, I use just a, a fine three-quarter file, you know, and you can just, you can just peel a little off that top. But that's pretty important. And it, how much you take off depends on what kind of wood you're cutting. You know, like, I, I, most of them I'm cutting hardwood. You don't want to take too big a bite, or it just chew, you know, it just it makes a chain chatter and jump. It's hard on the saw. So you kind of have to keep in mind what kind of wood you're cutting. Though, like when I'm cutting basswood, I have to cut them down quite a ways. Or that wood is so fuzzy, it tends to clog in the cutter. You know, it, it, it needs more, especially like when I was ripping. Now, this is the rip chain that I was using on the basswood. I've got these rakers cut way down, but they had to be because otherwise it would just, it, that fuzzy stuff would just clog in there, that real soft wood. In the ash, then it's no big deal. I can get by. This is the one, yeah, this is, see the, the rip chains have got a different angle cut on them. They're, they're getting closer to being square across, but that's where, like I say, this thing has got many different angles marked on it, so it makes it easy to keep track of. But this is the one for my 55. There are different bar between these two, but the chains are the same. And I tend to run Oregon chains all the time. I've had my best luck with them, but there again, people are real persnickety about which chain type they're running. But I pretty much just stick with these Oregon ones, I've had good luck with them. Now this has got a Husqvarna chain on, that's what came on it. I don't particularly care for them. You know, I wouldn't go out of my way to, to buy one. 
Uh, the bars are fine, but the chains are designed with this this anti kickback stuff in there. You know, it's a safety deal. But there again, it's one of them cases where things can be too safe. You know that they don't work as well. I, I have the ability to run a chainsaw without getting myself into jams. So I, I prefer to have just a plain chain, not these overly safe ones. Uh, this is, uh, you know, they're all right, but like I said, I've never had much luck with the Husqvarna chains. Uh, I do prefer the Oregon ones and the bars. They're reasonably priced and they, they work well. This just happened to come with a Husqvarna bar on it, which, you know, all the new Husqvarna as well. But when I, first time I have to buy a bar, it's an Oregon one I go for. Like I say, I do cut with the file most of the time, but I do have one of these 12 volt grinders. This one's been beat around a little. I actually have three different models of these. Uh, it's nice that it's 12 volt, that it's portable. But if you use these too much, you can tend to take too much off. Um, what I usually use these for is after a chain is kind of toward the end of its life. You know, then I'll, I'll I'll cut these rakers down quite a little and and go at them with that grinder and sharpen them up, but you'll never get them as good as they they originally were using one of those. You know, they like I said, they just take too much off. And you know, the stones. What I I do, I've got another saw that runs a smaller chain, and I've got a little dressing stone. So when these stones wear down. Like this one, I can see it down some because I had been cutting rakers on on the, what I was cutting basswood with. I ground them down. When they get kind of uh, uneven, I'll take that dressing stone and run it on there, cut them down to the size that works on my smaller chain. So I can get a long life out of them. But I've seen people overuse these. Uh, you know, people can tend to keep wanting to sharpen the chain uh, more often than it needs, but it isn't really a problem with the cutter. It's a problem that their guide isn't down far enough. If you cut those rakers down, your chain will last longer. The sharpening will last longer. But like I say, there's a lot of theories on chain sharpening. And it's one of the things that, you know, people, uh, they get persnickety about. I know my brother has got one of the, where it's a disc type grinder that goes down. They work fine, but there again, they can tend to take off more than you want. You know, you'll get a sharp chain, but you won't get as long a life out of it. A file really is the best way to go. And, and you don't absolutely have to have that guide on there, but it does help to keep that angle consistent. You know, it gives you something to go by. But that's how I do it, and I, I get a lot of use out of my chains. Uh, but like particularly in a rip chain, you really want them sharp. But even after a chain gets really bad, I hang on to them because, like I say, I'll cut those rakers way down. And if I have to cut something that's uh, like old bridge planks or railroad ties or something like that, I'll put one of them crappy old chains on and, and hammer at it with that. You know, if you've ever cut a railroad tie, try cutting when it's kind of half dark and the, the amount of granite that's embedded in them, the sparks really fly. You don't want to do that with a new chain. But some old piece of crap chain, that'll work fine. But they do need to be kept sharp. It's just much easier on the saw. And, and I see the funniest things, you know, sometimes in comments on... Uh, on people's videos with somebody say, oh, I see your problem is you have your chain, your bar on upside down. You really have to rotate them. Otherwise, it'll happen is pretty soon it'll, it'll wear and it'll wear one way. The chain will be intended to go one way. It'll start cutting what we call bananas where it, it cuts like that. And the more it does that, the more it aggravates that condition. So you got to flip that bar once in a while. But... You know, the amount, there again, it depends on the wood. So you really have to know your wood really is, is the key to the whole thing. And not all the wood cuts the same. Because I can get a lot of life out of a chain. 
Yeah, you know, well, I, I can stretch them out a long ways. You know, just by doing a, a constant routine stuff, never letting them get too bad. Because if they get bad, that's when it's hard on the saw. You know, if you get them chattering in the cut and stuff. But if you don't have the rakers down far enough, it just it's hard on the on the edge here. So you just you can see it where it'll actually roll the sharpness. The the pointed part will get rolled over. Well, then it isn't cutting; it's just grinding away on it. And you need her to cut. You know, nice nice little clean chips. And like I say, I'm cutting mostly hardwood. I, I don't really have a problem with sap buildup. I mean, some people if you're cutting pine and stuff, you can you can get that and in the groove where the chain runs in. Well, and that's another thing on these bars. You know, eventually that chain is going to wear a ridge. It'll wear down in the bar, and you'll get a ridge on the outside of the bar. Uh, you do have to take a file and flatten them out once in a while. And it's possible, too, if, if the bar gets so that the chain is kind of sloppy in there, you know, so it is flopped around. You can actually squeeze these back together a little bit and get a little longer life out of them, but you got to be kind of careful about doing that. You know, you can make a pinch point in there that, that really heats them up in a hurry. I've seen that happen where some will have a, a burnt spot on their bar from where they pinched it together or pinched it in a tree, because that happens. Uh, it's one thing I do when I go out cutting I'm normally I bring two saws with so that if I do get one in a bind I can cut it out with the other one if you want to bring in one saw bring another bar and a chain because you can easily just if the the saw is cut in the tree or caught just take the bolts out pull the cover off take and leave the bar hanging in the tree put the other bar and chain on and, and cut it out of there with that because I've had that happen you know, they can make an odd twist when they fall and, and wedge in there. But I try to keep it simple and portable and cheap. Just stretch that life out as long as you can. <laughs>